I used to read this excerpt um, to my students, and I'd leave out a word, and then I'd have them guess what the word was. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to read it, okay? <laughs> it's called Attitude. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. To me, it is more important than the facts, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the string we have, and that is our attitude. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. I stand for pledge. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The motion for the adoption of the agenda is recommended by the superintendent. Second. so much for having me. I appreciate that. And, uh, being a Citrus High School graduate and citizen of Citrus County and uh, I just felt that I wanted to come in and just say something. I know you guys having some tough issues with budgets and uh, you know cutbacks from the state and everything. I know it's a tough time but I just feel that uh, I, I know you guys have a lot of authority and power but just don't make quick decisions because uh, I look at Citrus County and around some of your buildings and I know that some of your buildings really need upkeep. I know that your bus is probably going to need upkeep and you know when we talk about spending money we really got to sit down and count the costs and sometimes I think that if we can look to the community, get the community input and see how they feel about it. I know that I'm very active in what's going on in the community. That's, that's my heart of this community. So I'm asking you to really, you know, let's see if we can if you don't have money, basically you can ask to go put on the uh, on the uh, ballot and see if these guys can give you some more money. I say that we are funding a lot of events, a lot of different things throughout Citrus County. I think the school board and schools is one of the greatest things. A great investment when we're dealing with kids. You guys do a great job. We have eight plus schools. I believe we can put a little investment in, put in some uh, funding. Uh, whatever you have to do, I know you got capital fund. I'm just looking at some of you guys, things that you need, and I know that if we don't fix our problem now, then down the line we're going to end up paying more money trying to repair buildings. I, I know I got more than one minute, but I looked at my house this morning. I was telling my wife last night. I said, "Look, we got a beautiful house, but things are start breaking apart. If we don't fix those things now, what's going to happen is we're going to pay more more money down the line." So basically, what do we do? We go ahead and try to fix the things that we have now, and then we worry about tomorrow when it gets there. So I'm asking you guys to please consider, if you nothing else, ask the citizens in Citrus County. Put it on the ballot. See if we can vote and see if we get some additional funding. This may be coming from the county or the state. 
that's pretty much all I have, and I'm just glad to be here and to be a part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we have Terry Brooks. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Terry Brooks, the Citrus County girl. I was raised in Crystal River, and I'm a product of the Citrus County school system. I graduated from Florida Southern College, but I came back home. Back home to live, raise my family, and teach. My father, Ralph Brooks, was a school board member for two terms. He was also a county commissioner for three terms. My mother, Betty Brooks Brown, taught in the county for over 30 years. I recently retired after 34 years, and my son, Jason Worsham, is a teacher at Lakanto High School. As you can see, education has been important to my family. We have dedicated our lives to it. Knowledge is power. Our school system has been dealt a bad hand. Not only from the economy, the downturn in that economy, the state of Florida has not been very helpful, and sadly, most sadly, by our own Citrus County Commission in relation to the impact fees. Something must be done. We as educators have one of the best school systems in the state of Florida. That brings people to our county. We must ensure that it continues to be the best. We as educators need to become involved and we need to become vocal. We need to support the additional sales tax for education and we must also call for the reinstatement of our impact fees. The Citrus County Commission should not have control of the impact fees for our Citrus County schools. I challenge us all to become involved, to become vocal, and push for these two things, the sales tax and the reinstatement of the impact fees. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Bynes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I didn't do my homework last night. I was asked to, to maybe I could have something to say, and the Lord knows I've always had plenty to say. <laughs> so I figured I'd just shoot from the hips. Um, education is like Terry. I mean, I, I put my 30 years into the system, and um, it, it really meant a lot, and it changed over the years. You know, in this place in 1976, pretty rural. And then look at us now. I mean, you know, I don't have to drive to Ocala for McDonald's, which is <laughs> you know. But you know, we were always fighting for money. It seemed like you you just take each decade, and it was always a shortage of money. Back when teachers, I mean, we would get two hundred dollars a year raise, or two fifty, or three hundred dollars a year raise. I remember that. It wasn't until the nineties where I started to see some climb, a little bit of a climb. And it's not just about the teachers, but I, I really think they're important, they're an integral part if you really are going to have a, 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 the future developed. You know, you've got to have a pillar in the community, and we are supposed to be it. And what happened is when we got so politically correct over the years, we lost the vision of fight. And I know I fought a little bit, you know, I always had something to say. <laughs> But the bottom line is my heart was very, very set in, in what is good. The question is, I define good different from other people, but the <coughs> bottom line is we have to start fighting again. You know, every time I read, and I'm 100% or you know, you can make it 1%, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you can make it 2%. I, I believe that you need to put money back in and you're gonna get more out. You know, people don't work for nothing. You know, you got to understand that we're not we're not in missionary. We're not doing missionary work, even though we did a lot of missionary work. Uh, there's a there's a point where we have to you know walk the walk and not just walk the walk. 
So here's just an idea. Uh, it's very, very hard to get out into the community and get people to listen to you. We need to be more vocal. You understand charter school is one step away from taking more funds. And public education, we're sitting there in a cushy thing thinking it's all good. It's not. It's falling apart. It's falling apart and you're taking money away and think you, did, you aren't doing a good job. They have this accountability that's unrealistic. We've always performed super well. I remember from years ago to now. We haven't been a great community yet. You could never see uh, the praise that came here. You know, we get it now because there's this, you know, we have these forms and everything is you know, so proper now. We did a great job years ago. We're doing a great job now. Why are we fighting so hard? I, I, I wish it wasn't three minutes because that's why I said I don't need to write anything down. My cousin, all my cousins are up in New York. They're all in education. And the bottom line is that they, uh, you know, we were talking one day, and she has a house, a three-bedroom, two-bath house, just like me, very modest. And you know what? She pays $12,000 in taxes. It's in the suburbs, not New York City. This is upstate. Uh, same house. And here we are. My taxes are nothing. And people complain about the taxes here. It's ridiculous. You go from $12,000 less to $1,000, and you want to even have you even think you want to say something? So we need to get out, and I would like to see if, if it could be organized for this system, where you say, okay, send out teams. You know, we, we've, we've set you up to speak to certain communities and, and, and uh, you know, where there's older people involved, because, you know, we've got to talk to the old people. We can't just put it in the paper. We've got to get in front of them and let it be real. And you're going to start to say, so we could have representation from administra administration, we could have from teachers, Various retired people, we have more time, you know, because you guys work your tail off, and I get it. But we got to start doing something because we're going to lose what we have. And so, one percent, half percent, one percent, I want to say one percent, a half percent is nothing, but it's where you have to start. You have to start, and then you have to teach because the people need to get educated, and you need to put in front, and they might not, they want to smack you in the face, maybe, and you take the hit. Well, let me tell you what's going on, because if we're trying to be a pillar of the community, you got to put a little concrete in the salt. Okay? It's not just salt. You've got to stiffen it. You've got to make it better. And if you want to be part of this community, which has been fantastic over the years, and we proved ourselves, then you need to start to say, what can, how can we help you? So we, we're going at it where we need to be a little more aggressive. We need to be a little bit more presentation and polished. When it comes to, look, if everybody's speaking from different levels or different angles, and you just said, look, you don't have a clue what's going on. And I, again, I need 30 minutes. But I'll stop, because I think I want to go three minutes. I think you're going to, oh yeah, I do have a watch on now. So anyways, Thanks very much. if you ever want to hear a 30 minute version, let me know. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You need to get money. Thank you. Uh, Chris Lloyd. Here you are. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. Unaccustomed as I am to speaking. <laughs> <laughs> You're normally not at this meeting, now. I'll, I'll break, that's right. I'll, I'll break a rule and speak here instead of the county commissioner, though, in fact, I'll be speaking to them <clears throat> today. I mean, probably not quite as nice. I have a million dollar question. I'm here, by the way, to support your <coughs> thrust for our sales, uh, sales tax. Unconditional. But I have a million dollar question. If the answer to this question is no, I sit there. Do you require a formal vote of authorization from all the county commissioners to put this on? No, they do not. Absolutely sure. Absolutely. Because had the answer been yes, the commission is have to okay it, I would say to you, my professional advice is don't even bother trying. Because of the no, seriously, in the present <coughs> political climate. It has, to go, it has to go in front of the Board of County Commissioners, but it's a pass-through. Yeah. Or then the place right. onto, the, onto, onto the ballot. Um, good with me if you give them a framed copy. <laughs> it's more, it's just a pass-through. I understand. Okay. It's very important. 
Yes, I do have some experience at Citrus County Government, but I was also a director of the Academy of Environmental Science for about five years, so it's a large school system. So, we'll assume, we hope, that you, you get a vote which says yes, you want to go ahead with the set. If you do, and I agree with the many of the comments made by the last gentleman, if you decide you want to go ahead, you better start working. The school district and school district people have great lives. I know many of them, many of you. Yeah. They're not very good at blowing their own trumpet. If you want to go out, you want to ask the public for money, you're going to blow your trumpet loud. So what do I mean by this? I mean that. Assume that, that go ahead and it's on the uh, it's on the ballot. You've got to go out, you've got to talk to any community groups that you can find. As you know, I'm a very prominent member of an organization called Citizens County Council. We represent several hundred homeowners. Uh, we haven't obviously had a chance to debate this particular topic, but I can tell you that Broadly speaking, we are always supportive of <coughs> schools and the superintendents. <coughs> but really, you need to like talk to everybody. Stop people as they go through the drive-through at McDonald's <laughs> and preach to them. Yeah? Talk to folks who you may meet if you're at church on Sunday. Chris is on the line, we're about to run out of time. Well, the other guy didn't run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> he talked for 25 minutes. <laughs> the, lights were, the lights weren't on, but... <laughs> I have to close up anyway because I have no... So, I lost my trust there for a moment. Sorry. Really got to treat this as a marketing campaign, because that's what it is. And if you don't market it, that means getting a chronicle to give you plenty of coverage. Yeah? All of you need to write guest columns to get the so Don't market this. I pretty much guarantee you that it is okay. Thanks very much, Chris. Next, uh, Lynn Doss. And then we'll turn on the light. This is right, we've got to turn it on for one person, so we'll turn on the light when we get three minutes. Oh, I'm going to get limited now. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everyone has three minutes at I, one time. I, I forgot. I'm, 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 I'm jerking your chain. Uh, like Chris, I am uh, oftentimes unaccustomed to speaking in public, but when I feel very passionate about something, I am going to speak my mind. As the son of a teacher, and as a teacher myself, we have been fighting this money battle since the day I was born and probably well before that time. We need to fix it. Many of us in the audience are for the tax increase, but we hate like heck to be an ATM every time we turn around. We have two fundamental problems here in Citrus County. One is the school board is a stakeholder without a voice in how it is funded through the impact fee. We have several members of uh, the audience who are BOCC candidates who I think we need to find out how we can fix this problem. The sitting BOCC members as well as all candidates should address how the school board can be left as the tail that is being wagged by the BOCC dog in funding for capital projects. The second thing, and I've been an advocate for economic development for quite some time, is that we have a terrible disconnect in this county between the BOCC, the EDA, and other members who should be active in attracting businesses to grow this county where we can have 
a better tax base. We cannot rely simply on tourism and hotels and restaurants for our tax base. We need industry, we need to be able to grow this county so we have good jobs where we can keep the best and brightest students for uh, our benefit, not export them to somewhere else. We need to get our act together, and the only way we're going to do that is if we take a progressive look and plan to get ahead, not to cut back. We have too many people who are looking at shrinking a budget where it benefits nobody except a very few. Let's get our act together, people. Let's make Citrus County great, and let's stop bickering about what we have to do to get there. Let's move. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. as a quick postscript, I am happy to report I am cancer free. to invite uh, any two people that you would propose, um, someone who is for this and some per and a person who is against it, and we would be happy to um, sponsor a debate and uh, for the school district, and um, I hope you'll take us up on that um, on that proposal. Now I'm going to take my school, my, my, uh, <laughs> my league hat off, and uh, say, uh, as a citizen of Citrus County, I'm very proud to live here and very proud to be part of this community and um, very proud of the school, school board. Um, you've been, been incredible. Um, one of my little notes here is, last week I had the privilege of visiting La Cancho Primary School. If you have not been there, I know you have, but people here, if you have not seen that school and how hard those teachers and they, students are so excited about learning. But how they can be excited is only a commitment from the teachers that make it so. Because that school is the most depressing place I've seen in, as far as a school in a long time. That needs to be upgraded. I haven't had an opportunity to see the other schools that we're discussing uh, improving, but I'm sure that they're in the typical <laughs> state as Lacanto Primary. This is d disastrous for our kids, and I think we need to do that. Um, that's why I'm speaking, of course, in favor of the half um, percent um, tax increase. Um, I took uh, note of uh, Thomas Kennedy's article in the, col the column in the paper, an excellent explanation. And to tell you the truth, I am a very good protester, or I am a very good person to um, carry signs and support our schools and just tell me where and when. I even make my own sign and I will be there. <laughs> because I agree with Chris in that we do need to have vocal uh, support of our school district and vocal support of this. If it hadn't been for the, uh, the delay or the, um, the suspension of our impact fees, um, uh, that w probably would have been fine. It probably would have helped a lot for you to be able to do what you need to do for our school district. So, and as you know, I went before the uh, commission and told them how wrong they were to take the currency away from the school district, and they ended up voting for continuing it. But if you don't have any money, it's not really. <laughs> but at least, you know, we need to get that agreement in place. So. Thank you for letting me speak, and I do have my business card. I can give it to the Please. Please. And um, thank you, and good luck. I thank you. Call me if you need me to. Yes. Thank you. 
tarot down here. Hello, um, my name is Tara Williams Donnelly. Um, I uh, was born in Orlando, but we, I grew up in Crystal River and uh, went through Crystal River Primary, part of Lacanto Primary, and Crystal River Middle and High School. And then went to University of Florida and got my degree in speech pathology and well, my, 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 excuse me, bachelor's. I'm a little nervous. I don't like getting up and speaking in front of people. Um, but uh, I came back, or after, after UF, I went and I worked in Hillsborough County and Orange County schools <coughs> doing speech therapy. And um, I come from a family of educators. Um, my grandmother was, I believe, the first woman on the school board years ago. Um, and um, I, my mom was a teacher, my aunts are teachers, I have teachers all in my family. Um, but uh, my husband and I moved back here to start a business, and we've been here for eight years. And I'm one of the few that, that comes back <laughs> and starts a business. But um, we have two boys that are in public school, one at Citrus Springs Elementary, one at Citrus Springs Middle. And um, I just, I think that, that, it, that both schools are, are very good. And County, we have lots of lots of great things to offer. Mr. Bynes was one of my science teachers years ago, <laughs> um, but there's so much here that we have to offer, and we're one of the few counties that uh, that has has arts, and that has you know music and art, and and there are people that want to come to Citrus County because other counties don't offer what we do, and it would be a shame to see any of that go away. Um, I, I'm in favor of the half cent sales tax on the ballot, and I really hope that we can have these reinstated because that is something that is a shame that we're going to work with our schools. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. This probably is not going to be one of my favorite conversations. Um, We've lived here, and as Ginger uh, and Linda know, uh, we moved here from Tampa. My name's Terry Cooper, for the record. We moved here from Tampa when our son was two years old. The so-called experts down there said he was too retarded to ever do anything. He'd never tie his shoes, be potty trained, or anything. He came through this educational system, then to Crest, and then to Key. And as you guys know, you know my son, he functions like everybody else. Every Monday he works at the hospital, today he's working at the thrift store, and I lay that all on the education he got here. God pointed us here, and it's paid off. My daughter just turned 25. She was uh, editor-in-chief of the uh, Lacanto paper, and then editor-in-chief of her undergrad newspaper, uh, she's right now in the middle of her master's program with straight A's. I lay that all with you guys. You've done a great job. However, if you saw the Chronicle last week, Thursday, I had a letter in there saying, we are not the ATM. Uh, there have been some questionable things along the way, not to be laid at your doorstep, we lost $750,000 seven years, eight years ago because we outsourced something to a consultant. He brought in $750,000 that belonged to this school department and put it in his pocket. Lack of oversight there. My phone started ringing about an hour after that newspaper hit. I don't take this as any insult because it's not directed at anybody, but I was told by several teachers, whether this is accurate or not, it is their perception. They were upset that the school administration, or whatever you call it, donated a bunch of money for the swimming pool at the Y. They said a million bucks, mm -hmm. whatever it was. No, I know, I've had a long conversation with Sam Himmel and, and back and forth with uh, Mike Arnold, uh, et cetera, and I'm gonna, supposed to be meeting with, with Sam in a couple of days. And the perception, like I'm saying, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. The perception is that 
this was Mr. Kennedy's program, so Mr. Kennedy's son would have a swimming pool. Maybe right, maybe wrong, but that's the perception. And uh, <laughs> try to overcome the perception. Some people think Barack Obama's a great guy. Try to overcome that. Uh, and I got a phone call from one of our elected officials. No, I'm sorry, I bumped into that elected official at the opening of the Y, which is an incredible place, incidentally. And that person says, hey, this tax increase is wrong, and we're going to talk about it. So we've had a lot of people praise us, and you guys are doing a great job. No question about it. You're doing a great job at the education. Doing a job of managing the money sometimes is a little questionable. And we can't, we taxpayers can't be held as an ATM. Now the impact fees, I don't know anything about that. We paid ours when we moved here. I've never been any place in the world where we've had about impact 30 fees. Seconds. Say again? About 30 seconds. Thank you. So uh, I'd like a brand new Lamborghini. I can't afford one. And if, uh, if, if I had a, a bunch of people to go to that had money, okay, I'd have a new Lamborghini, but I don't. You guys have to live within your budget, whether you like it or not, whether you formed the budget or not, whether you wasted the money in the past or not, somebody wasted it. We taxpayers should not be on the hook for that. You guys get paid a lot of money. I've never seen any school board get paid except in Florida. Thanks for listening to me. I just want to let you know it's not necessarily only my comments, it's also the perception. You have to fight the perception. Thanks very much, Mr. Thank you. We appreciate it. You wish I didn't. Not at all, because you, you always uh, say something that inspires people to think more and to, to go out and tell people some information they might not have. So yeah, I really you. appreciate it. Madam Chair, I would like to yes, respond please. because uh, there was my son's uh, situation brought up. Mr. Cooper, yes. my son goes to Crystal River High School. He swims at the bicentennial pool, has since the age of five, will continue to do so, as he has, which is a Board of County Commission pool. Don't give the messenger, I'm just telling you. No, 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 I'm, I'm, saying, I'm stating this for the record, okay. so this is very clear, because I am offended that someone would bring my children and saying that there's an ethical issue here, when in particular, we were talking about not a million dollars, there was a $325,000 investment this district did for a 25-year use of the YMCA pool for the high school competitions. I'm aware of that. In addition, there is a 25-year agreement for the YMCA to take over our swim safety program for all of the elementary students that will be coming into the school system. That is saving this district a substantial amount of money over the next 25 years. This was not about a swimming pool access. And to say that, sir, it's really just, it, it's, it's, re, it's re expressing rhetoric, rhetoric that is inaccurate. And so purely by stating it publicly, you are sharing inaccuracies in, in, in a sense that, that is shocking that you would do that in a personal way. I will tell you, if you don't know, my wife actually taught your daughter. She had a very positive experience with your daughter and with you. My daughter was great. And I would never in my life share inaccurate information publicly when that's just plain wrong. It is absolutely wrong. It is absolutely inaccurate. And I have to say, I was not a board member when the E-rate situation happened. This school district was stolen of that money. A man went to jail for that. And we actually were able to, because of state laws, were not being able to recoup that, even though it was proven that there was fraud by this individual. So again, this isn't mismanagement of funds. This is absolutely about being stolen of funds. So I am very concerned that when misinformation is shared without the accuracy of understanding that. So I, I just want, hope that that record has been straightened. Um, for those, again, that need to know, my son is actually part of the Bicentennial Suncoast swim team, does not swim at the YMCA, and I am not a member of the YMCA. So I, I hope that that record is now straight and clear. 
Are you all done? I, I, I'm done, done, sir, but I, I actually am, am here to say Could I ask both of y'all if you want to discuss this further on Absolutely. a personal basis? Absolutely, I, I believe that that's well, the meeting. You're trying to uh, uh, have people come and... Oh, no, we appreciate that. I didn't it. say these things were true. I prefaced and I closed by saying this is the perception you're But Mr. Mr. Cooper, what he's saying is that when you voiced it, then maybe people listening to it thought that, that there was some some uh, truth to it, which we been in all of us know. Now, except Sam <laughs> Himmel asked me to hold off until I came to this meeting. Yeah, uh, and, and what... Uh, and if it was in the Chronicle, it would have again been more inaccuracies. Had you discussed it with me? Had somebody contacted me? Let me again a ask both of you, if you will, after the meeting, if you want to discuss something Absolutely. on a personal to do so. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. Well, you got, put me up in the phone book. I'm not going to be here when this meeting's over at 4 o'clock or whatever. <laughs> but, we, we work it. Oh, sometimes it is longer, but it won't be that long. Um, you guys get paid to be here, I don't. <laughs> We'd be here with that. <laughs> it wouldn't be as much fun, though, would it? <clears throat> uh, Melissa Westfall. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a whole different speech prepared, so we're just going to set that aside for a moment. Um, I am Melissa Westfall. Uh, I'm just a mom. I don't have the history that some of our people here have, um, but I am a graduate of Chris River High School. Go Pirates! And uh, my children uh, are in the school system now. Um, it's a funny thing when I get fired up, I have a, a reputation of praying out loud before I speak because I tend to spat. And I really thought I was coming up here prayer free, but it turns out I, I'm not. So um, I just want to pray over this room right now and just say, Lord, please let the words that come out of my mouth, let them please be productive and positive, Lord. And all in your name we pray. Mr. Cooper, wow. Um, as a fellow parent of a special needs child going through this school system, I am appalled that no matter what these people could do professionally, academically, or personally, that, and I do want to tell you I have my time to speak, so please don't interrupt. I'm not interrupting. Okay. Um, there is nothing that the people in this room could ever do that would make me speak so disrespectfully after the way that they have treated my children. Um, my daughter, her file actually reads miraculous because of her progress. She's on the autism spectrum. And, um, oh my gosh, I'm so fired up. Thank you, Lord. Um, I don't even know where to start. First of all, um, let me start by saying um, that this pool that you referred to um, without having uh, adequate information, the thing that they did through the Y is saving over $750,000. Let me say it again, $750,000 over 25 years by them going into this program. And I honestly, if I had been a part of that or my kid was on the swim team and that took place, I'd probably fib and just jump on board and say I did have something to do with that because the amount of money that is saving our school system is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but something that I think is also important for you, you seem to have a reputation as far as speaking in front of people, your integrity is lost when you're unprofessional. And you, what you're saying here is not being discounted. Please don't, please don't be offended. I, I want you to understand what I'm saying. But no, yes, no, I please. I am offended because you're claiming that these comments were mine. I'm like, again, just, yeah, just, just a moment. This forum is for the speaker yep. at the podium to speak and not for dialogue my, between my people. Point, so if you would, both of you address that, I appreciate it. My point being, you can tell people that they stink at what they do and that they have a horrible reputation, but you can do it with class, and there is certainly no need to bring um, gossip or I heard someone say into a professional forum. <laughs> we have been given this opportunity to present our opinions on this going on the ballot or not, and I think it should stick to that. Um, I want to now focus on the board and say thank you guys for um, the opportunity to stand here, for the opportunity for my children to have gone through the school, um, people relocate to this area like other people have spoken and I just want to say ditto also to everything that they already said because I don't have time to repeat it. 
Um, but something that really strikes me, um, struck me hard happened a few weeks ago. I was in a, a city council meeting in Crystal River, standing room only, a group of passionate people wanting to talk about a particular subject, subject and I wish this room was full right now, of both the for and against, because we want to hear both sides. Maybe we are missing, Mr. Cooper, so we certainly don't, we're not saying we don't want to hear your opinion, we just want to hear it maybe versed a little more professionally. Um, so anyway, at the um, City of Crystal River meeting, it was standing room only, there's people of all ages standing in the room, and I turned to a gentleman who was handing the media behind me, and I said, sir, do you think maybe we can find some more chairs? You know, maybe you can help me, I'll help you carry them. And he looked me square in the eyes and said, it's not my job. Well, I was on another forum that night and had another passionate issue, so I spoke to him, you know. About 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, so I think what it boils down to here, and that, that just struck me so hard, it's not my job. It is our job as citizens, as parents, as homeowners, as purchasers, as people getting a paycheck. It is our job to, um, to support the school system. It is totally our job, just like someone spoke earlier, to take care of things when they're falling apart. Um, I just think that um, this is not an ATM. This is investing in something that gives back to our future. I would certainly like to think you would like educated people making decisions on your retirement, on your social security, and we're raising those kids through our school system now. And you do appear to be a person that doesn't find a lot of light in a great situation, so I just ask you to please choose the words carefully that you use for the rest of this, um, and just speak respectfully, please. Um, but I want to thank you guys so much, and it is a no-brainer, guys. This has to go on the ballot, and you have a room full of people who are going to work for you and do everything we can to make it pass. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Alexander, you wanted to have a couple closing remarks? <clears throat> We're timing you. All right, thank <laughs> you. Well, you know I'm a preacher, so I always have to do the benediction. So. <laughs> and I appreciate her coming and prayed. I prayed before I came here this morning. I want to say, though, that the YMCA, I'm a board of directors, on the board of directors at the YMCA. Your contribution to the YMCA is a partnership, and the YMCA stands behind their partnership. And so basically, you're going to save millions of dollars by entering in that partnership with the YMCA. So, and if you're not a member of the YMCA, I'm saying everybody, it's a great facility. Go up and join. and. Uh, we got some good rates for you, and it would be a blessing to you just to be a part of the YMCA. Now, the next thing, I did leave out a few things. Reduced funding in the capital fund resulting in a loss of, I'm talking about millions of dollars in the last five years already. I did a little re bit of research. We got to maintain our buildings, and we got to maintain our, our vehicles, everything that you have. Uh, you have $25 million in maintenance needed over your buildings for the next five years. That's a lot of money, so you guys gotta think about that. That's a lot of money that's needed. Capital funding, without this additional revenue, the district will have the means to keep up the major maintenance projects and renovation. You guys need, need a lot of money. I wanna say this, that uh, closing my, in my closing, that taxpayers, they trust you guys with your most valuable possession. That is our children and our family. They expect you to keep it safe and keep them in good environment. The additional revenue will keep uh, the reality in Citrus County. Citrus County is one of the best places. I've traveled around the world, I can tell you, as a military 20-year veteran, and came back here because this is the place I want to be, and this is the place I want to invest in. You guys are doing a great job. You guys know me. Listen, I pray for you. Let's get this capital funding going. Not only that, but also uh, put it on, on the ballot. Listen, I'll go up there and fight for you. You know, other people that's out here, listen, we got to pray. we got to come together. we got to be unified, and let, we can do this. Let's do it for the future of our church. Thank you. i got to go, but God bless you all. Just do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have the school support services. Mr. Bishop is going to talk about capital outlay update. Would y'all like to break? Okay. <clears throat> Take about five minutes, guys. You can up to eight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning. The, my first request is to seek approval for the instructional and support recommendations as outlined in the goldenrod. I do have an addition I would like to add under resignations 
for 2015-16, Sean Furness's name, and he will resign as of 5-31-2016. He has accepted an administrative position. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Do you have a motion? That's what we'll look at for a minute more. Than this. That's your motion. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the instructional and support recommendations as presented on the Golden Rod. Okay. It's been moved by Mr. Dodd, seconded by Mrs. Bryant to approve the instructional and support recommendations as seen on the Golden Rod. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries 4 0. Thank you. Next, I'm asking approval of Laura Manis to be named the Coordinator of Instructional Support for Teachers, effective July 1, 2016. Move approval. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Bryant, seconded by Mr. Kennedy, to approve Laura Manis, Coordinator of Instructional Support for Teachers, effective July 1, 2016. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries 4 0. Thank you. Um, Next, I'm asking approval for Todd Goolsby to be named assistant principal of Citrus High School with the effective date of May 27, 2016. I uh, move that we approve Todd Goolsby, assistant principal of Citrus High School, effective May 27, 2016. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Dodd. To approve Todd Gillsby, assistant principal of Citrus High School, effective May the 27th, 2016. Can I get her I guess I can. You're the chair, you can do my job. Very excited that Todd is uh, going to assume that decision. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries 4 0. Is Todd in the room? He is Just outside the right outside, outside, right outside, okay. Next, I am asking approval for Lorraine Casalvieri to be named Assistant Director at WTC, effective May 27, 2016. I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of Lorraine Casalvieri as Assistant Director of the Wilfrid Technical College, effective May 27, 2016. It's been moved by Mr. Dodd, second by Mrs. Bryant, to approve Lorraine Casalvieri as Assistant Director of Wilfrid Technical College, Effective May the 27th, 2016. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, Gary, it's 4 0 with a slow eye. <laughs> Mine was for approval. <laughs> uh, next. Next, I'm asking approval for Sean Furness to be named assistant principal at Rock Crusher Elementary School, effective June 1st, 2016. Move approval to uh, approve uh, assistant. Principal of Rock Crusher Elementary to be Sean Furness. Effective date is what was it? June 1st, 2016. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mrs. Bryant, to approve Sean Furness as Assistant Principal of Rock Crusher Elementary School, effective June 1st, 2016. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Here's, uh, opposed? Here's 4 0. Thank you. Next, I'm asking approval of Stephanie Gardner to be named Supervisor of Achievement Data Technology, effective June 1, 2016. I'll make a motion that we approve the appointment of Stephanie Gardner, Supervisor of Achievement Data Technology, effective June 1, 2016. It's been uh, moved by Mr. Dodd, seconded by Mrs. Bryant, to approve Stephanie uh, Gardner as Supervisor of Achievement Data Technology, effective June 1st, uh, 2016. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 4 0. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. And right on time. Boy, that was good. <laughs> okay, next we're going to into an administrative hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll recess this meeting and then we'll go into an administrative hearing. And the people in the audience have to uh, go out. And did they do the finance yet? They didn't do that, right? No, they're going and to do the capital one. Okay, after it. Okay.